When you bought your new Explorer, you not only bought a fun vehicle, you've also acquired the integrity and quality of the Ford name, which means that your satisfaction with your new vehicle is our number one priority. And to back that up, we put together this presentation especially for you, to help you get to know your Explorer better. We've taken this extra step just to make sure you know all about your new vehicle and so that you can get the most use out of all that it has to offer. So, during the next few minutes, we'll be touching on things like its operation, some of its standard features as well as some of its optional features, maintenance procedures, safety features, and on-road and off-road driving, things like that. For more detailed information, you'll find in your glove compartment such things as the owner guide, which includes the maintenance schedule and record log, operating guide, a sound systems operating guide, and the four-wheeling supplement. In addition, you'll notice important warnings and other information on decals and labels located at various places on the vehicle itself. You'll want to review these from time to time. You'll also want to keep in touch with your Ford dealer for maintenance or any other questions you may have about your new Explorer. But for now, let's get started by pointing out some of the underhood service points. After the hood is popped, you'll find the safety latch just beneath the Ford emblem. These do-it-yourself service points are highlighted in bright yellow so that you don't have to poke and probe to find out where they are or what they're for. Coolant, windshield washer fluid, oil dipstick, oil filler tube, things like that. Now, normal maintenance information and intervals for oil changes can be found in your owner's guide. While we're here, the jack handle is located just above the radiator. It snaps into rattle-free clips for storage. If you need to change a tire, the spare is located here, at the rear under the cargo compartment. To get at the spare, simply insert the jack handle into this slot and turn counterclockwise to lower it. Just reverse the procedure to stow the spare. Turn the crank clockwise until you hear the override click and check that the tire is tightly seated by pushing up against it. The jack itself is stowed here, behind this panel at the left rear of the cargo compartment. The lug wrench is also here, as well as information about how to change a tire. Now, don't overlook these gloves because they can come in handy in those messy situations. A word of caution. If you have to replace a tire, don't use a size and type of tire and wheel other than that originally provided by Ford. Otherwise, the safety and performance of your Explorer can be adversely affected. There are labels on the driver's door that give you information about tire replacement. And if you have any questions about tires, contact a Ford dealer. If your Explorer has a luggage rack, here are a few tips on its use. This rear cross piece can be adjusted to accommodate different load sizes. The tie-downs slide fore and aft and lock into position with a slight turn. It's very convenient. The weight limitation is 100 pounds and is posted on the decal. All explorers have cargo tie-down hooks, which can be used with the optional cargo net. Now, the net will help keep lightweight cargo from shifting when you're on the move. And a cinch with a built-in release makes it simple to use. Also, your Explorer may have a cargo area shade. If it does, operation is simple. And it can be removed entirely using the releases located at each end. While we're here in the rear cargo area, just let me point out the variety of seating combinations you can choose. If your new Explorer is a four-door, you have a 60-40 rear seating combination. To lower the seat backs, simply rotate the lever here. You'll find one on each side of the seat. See how simple it is? With one of the seat backs lowered, there's room for both a passenger and log objects. With both seat backs lowered, you have a lot more room for carrying things, all kinds of things. This arrangement provides you with built-in flexibility. On two-door models, you have similar advantages. Only the seat back release is at the top of the seat back. Very easy, as you can see. Another point on the four-door models. If you look here, you'll find a child-proof door lock. You just flip it up, and the rear door cannot be opened from the inside. Now let's move up front and cover some items there.
certain models have auxiliary sun visors. They're great for reducing road glare and for blocking out the sun. The driver has the same thing on the other side. If your Explorer has a sunroof, you can use it several different ways. It can be popped up with the sunshade in place. It can be popped up without the sunshade, or it can be removed entirely. There's a storage bag provided to stow the sunroof and liner. Secure the storage bag in the cargo area using the tie-down hooks. If your Explorer is equipped with sport bucket seats, you'll notice two switches right here. One is marked lumbar, and the other is marked bolster. Press the lumbar, and you'll feel support in your lower back. Press the bolster, and the seat firms up along your thighs. The sport seat also has a thigh support. Pull it out to extend it. The passenger seat also has the thigh support and the lumbar feature. Both seats recline. Here's the lever. But remember, while the vehicle is in motion, both seat backs must be upright. Some explorers are equipped with power-operated door locks, windows, and outside mirrors. Of interest here is the switch design. You'll notice they have bumps and hollows. This is so you don't have to fumble with them in the dark. You'll be able to work them by feel alone. Engineers call them ergonomic switches. I call them a good idea. The hazard flasher switch is clearly marked and visible here on the top side of the steering column. Now let's look at the automatic transmission settings. You'll notice two D's. The one in the circle is the overdrive setting, which is the normal driving position. The other one is the straight drive setting, which locks out overdrive. It might be used, for example, if you're driving at high elevations or pulling a trailer. Also beneath the dash, to the right of the transmission hub, is a fuel pump shutoff switch. It'll automatically trigger if your vehicle is involved in a collision or if your vehicle is severely jarred. Once the switch is triggered, it has to be reset to start the engine. Keep that in mind. Directions on how to set the clock, lock-in stations, and other information about how to work your particular sound system are in this guide. So much for safety, comfort, and convenience features. You'll want to refer to your owner guide and supplements for other specifics that we haven't covered here. Now we're going to briefly cover some important on-road driving tips. This will be followed by some off-road maneuvering demonstrations that will be handled by an experienced driver. However, before we do that, let me just say that your new Explorer is one of the most versatile vehicles on the road today. With it, you can go places and do things you couldn't do before. And you'll enjoy a new sense of freedom, because the Explorer is truly an all-around performance vehicle. We make this point because your 4x4 Explorer, especially when loaded, may handle differently than an ordinary passenger car. This is because your 4x4 vehicle has special design and equipment features for off-road operation. Since these features are unique, you must pay special attention to safety. As an overall precaution, take it slow and easy until you get to know and understand your new Explorer and have built confidence in your ability to handle it both on and off the road. Federal law requires that all utility vehicles, including your Explorer, carry a caution to drivers. Avoid any unnecessary sharp turns or other abrupt maneuvers that could cause loss of control, possibly leading to rollover. Now for some tips on how to handle your Explorer on-road. And remember, always buckle up. There's no need to depress the accelerator before starting the engine. The electronic fuel injectors eliminate the need to do that. It's important to remember that the braking characteristics of a four-wheel drive unit are the same as with a two-wheel drive. You can't stop in less distance with a four-wheel drive. If you have a four-wheel drive model and find you need additional traction in certain situations, with the mere touch of a button, you can select the sure-footed security of four-wheel drive. We'll be covering this procedure in greater detail in a moment. For an added plus, the Explorer's electronic anti-lock brake system, which operates when traveling in two-wheel and four-wheel drive, is designed to inhibit complete wheel lockup and help you come to straight stops under most operating conditions.
Now let's cover some on-road emergency situations. If your vehicle goes off the edge of the pavement, slow down, but avoid severe brake application. Ease the vehicle back onto the pavement only after reducing your speed and the traffic clears. Don't turn the wheel too sharply while returning to the road surface. If you're forced off the road and into a ditch, don't try to cut the wheel sharply to move out of the ditch. The correct procedure is to continue in a straight line to the bottom of the ditch and then ease out of the ditch. Check for traffic before re-entering the highway. Well, so much for on-road driving tips. Now we're going to be moving out for some off-road maneuvers. But to demonstrate the proper techniques, we have an experienced driver to help us. Let me explain how simple it is to shift into four-wheel drive. With the standard touch drive electric shift transfer case, all you do is press this button, labeled 4x4, to shift into four-wheel drive. You'll know you're in the four-wheel drive mode because the light will appear, and a 4x4 graphic will display here. You can shift in and out of four-wheel drive high while the vehicle is stopped or while traveling at normal road speeds. Your standard touch drive transfer case also has a low range mode, which provides power to the front and rear axles at reduced speed. To shift into or out of low range, you must stop the vehicle and shift either the automatic transmission to neutral or disengage the clutch on a manual transmission before pushing the low range button. When it's in low range, a light also appears and a low range graphic is displayed. If your Explorer is equipped with the optional manual transfer case, a different procedure is necessary. You'll need to manually lock the front hubs for four-wheel drive operation. Transfer case selection is made by placing the shift lever in the desired position. Again, shift into or out of the four-wheel drive low range only when the vehicle is stopped and the manual clutch is disengaged, or the automatic transmission is in neutral. The neutral position on the manual transfer case should only be used when the vehicle is being towed. Caution must be used when the transfer case is in the neutral position. Because the vehicle is free to move, even though the automatic transmission is in park or the manual transmission is in any driving gear. When you're operating in tight situations, you must be aware of the clearance needed for the rear of the vehicle and swing wide enough to avoid a hang-up. When driving over logs, it's best to present one wheel at a time, rather than taking it head on. We call this maneuver duck walking. And always be aware of the clearance beneath the axle differential housing in areas where ground clearance is limited. When operating on steep grades, avoid angling up the grade or turning the wheels. The recommended way to do it is to approach the grade in a straight line to the very top. If you're off-roading in wet grass, bear in mind it can be as treacherous as ice or snow. In this situation, especially on steep descents, you should drop into the low range mode and use the engine for braking. As we recommended for climbing steep grades, you should descend steep grades in a straight line to the bottom and avoid turning the wheel in an angling maneuver. When operating in loose terrain, such as sand, it's important to try to keep all four wheels on the most solid area of the trail. Shift into a lower gear, apply the accelerator slowly, and drive steadily through the soft terrain. If you can, avoid lowering the tire pressures to improve traction. However, if you must reduce tire pressure for whatever reason, make sure you reinflate the tires before returning to the highway. When driving through mud, be alert for any sudden changes in speed or direction. Even four-wheel drive vehicles can lose traction in slick mud. Also, avoid spinning the wheels. And if you start into a slide, turn the wheels in the direction of the slide to recover. It's wise to hose down the undercarriage as well as the tires after plowing through mud. Before you drive through water, know how deep it is and avoid water deep enough to completely submerge the wheel hubs. Move slowly to avoid splashing. You could stall out if the ignition system gets wet. When you're clear of the water, be sure to test your brakes. Wet brakes aren't as responsive as dry ones. 
By touching lightly on the brakes as you continue to move, they'll drive faster. And that's it for off-road tips. You know, there's a lot of natural beauty out there to enjoy. Leaving the land as you found it means that that beauty will be there for others who follow. So, tread lightly. Well, we've given you some basic information about your new Explorer. However, we've really only touched on the highlights. For more detailed information, read your owner's guide, supplements, information labels, and talk to your Ford dealer. Remember, to get long-term enjoyment from your Explorer, treat it properly. Don't place demands on it that may be unsafe. And follow the recommended maintenance schedules. As you explore places you couldn't get to in a conventional vehicle, you'll open new doors to greater traveling comfort, enjoyment, and performance. You'll find that you've chosen a vehicle of uncommon flexibility, one that responds to your active and varied lifestyle and expresses your spirit of individuality. You chose a vehicle to satisfy the driving enthusiast in you. Now, let Explorer take you in search of your adventures.